Turning to the midterms now, a secretly taped audio recording is raising a lot of questions for Democratic leadership right now. The audio has been obtained by The Intercept, and in it, you can allegedly hear House Minority Whip Steny Hoyer pressuring a progressive Democrat to leave the race. Have a listen. You would like me to get out of the race. And of course, that's, that's correct. Yeah. I know you're fundraising for Crow. Yeah. You know. I'm for Crow. I am for Crow because the judgment was made very early on. I didn't participate in the decision. So your position is a decision was made, you know, very early on before voters had a say. That's fine because that's the DCCC knows better than the voters of the 6th Congressional District, and we should line up behind that candidate. That's certainly the consequence of our decision. Investigative reporter for The Intercept, Lee Fong, broke the story this morning. Lee, thanks so much for being with us. We should note that we reached out to Congressman Hoyer but have yet to hear back. But you have heard back from him. What did Congressman Hoyer's office tell you? That's right. Uh, Congressman Hoyer's office mentioned that they have publicly supported Jason Crow, the establishment kind of pick in that Colorado congressional race, but they declined to comment on this specific conversation that was uh, taped and released to us. Well, we heard that conversation. It doesn't sound good. What can you tell me about these recordings? When and why did Democratic candidate Levi, Levi Tillman decide to record and release this conversation? Well, here at The Intercept, we've covered the battle for the heart and soul of the Democratic Party. You know, there are all of these congressional races going on across the country. Democrats are hoping to retake the House. And in congressional primaries, the DCCC, this is the party arm devoted to electing members to Congress, they claim that they remain neutral in these party primaries, that they don't play favorites. But we've talked to so many candidates across the country where they say that the DCCC is, in fact, uh, selecting candidates and pushing resources and money and endorsements, giving them special polling data and training seminars and making sure just this kind of select few uh, party-backed candidates win uh, their nomination and they're elbowing out progressive competitors. What's special about this Colorado race is that one of the progressive candidates being elbowed out in favor of another establishment back pick, he decided to fight back. He decided to, uh, after several of these type of meetings where, you know, insiders have intimidated him or told him to leave the race, he decided to record one of these meetings uh, and release it to us. All right, Lee, we want to play some more of those obtained audio recordings. Let's listen. Crow is the favorite, N in no small part, Congressman Hoyer, because the DCCC not only put its finger on the scale, but started jumping on the scale very early on. and. I'm born and raised a Democrat. I mean, it's undemocratic to have a small elite select someone and then try to rig the primary against the other people running. And that is that is basically what's been happening. I hear you, and I disagree. But you were part of that process Absolutely. as well. You said absolute. Yes. Yeah. I've been at this a long time. Yeah. Uh, when I said you need to get in strong, hard, and early, you disagree with me. Obviously. Your and you guys are shoveling money at him. I'm going to continue. You're going to continue to do it? We are going to continue to do it. And the reason why we're going to do it is because a decision was made to focus. It was clear that was our policy and our hope that we could early on try to come to an agreement on a candidate that we thought could win the judgment. Mm -hmm and to give that candidate all the help we could give them so that we would have a unified effort going into a general election. Which, which means, effectively, Congressman Hoyer, I'm running a campaign against Crow and against you and against the DCCC because you guys are on Crow's side. Yeah. You know, frankly, that happens in life all the time. So to be fair, Tillman is definitely sort of orchestrating the conversation, and Congressman Hoyer does say at one point, I disagree with your characterization. So while, you know, it seems to be, seems to be favoring Tillman's point, there, there is some conversation over this that needs to happen. Well, there's a push and pull, of course. You know, from the party's perspective, they believe that they know the type of candidate 
uh, that can win in these general elections against Republican incumbents. Um, you know, there are a lot of seats that the Democrats are targeting, and they believe kind of more moderate, business-friendly candidates, uh, folks with access to a lot of donor resources, <laughs> uh, can win in these general elections. The problem here is that, you know, President Obama and the Democratic Party have promised that the Democratic Party is a big tent, that they're welcoming candidates of every stripe, and that they would r remain neutral in these primaries. I think the audio very clearly shows that Steny Hoyer and the, the big party leadership have behind closed doors, selected candidates, and they're doing everything they can to crush competitive primaries. The other kind of flip side of this is that how does the party really know that these uh, a little bit more business-friendly, moderate candidates can really win these general elections? The DCCC, the Democratic Party, has a very bad uh, history going back <laughs> even to tw 2006. They've lost a lot of these, these races. They've, they've gone in and selected candidates that they think can win, and they've lost to Republicans. So it's, it's not even clear if this is a great strategy for the party. Right, and Lee, the recordings take us behind the scenes of the political machine. It's often not a pretty scene when you go, you know, behind the curtain. Talk us through the process a bit here. I mean, this Colorado race is very competitive. How common is it for political parties of both sides to rally behind a single candidate this early in the process? Well, both parties kind of engage in this process. It's, it's not necessarily new. The most publicized and kind of a uh, famous example of this in, in recent memory is the 2016 Democratic primary. You had Bernie and Hillary uh, both vying for the Democratic nomination. Again, the DNC, the Democratic Party, claimed that they were neutral, that they were an open tent. But we saw, um, you know, example after example of uh, the party establishment lining up endorsements, super PACs, money, uh, all kinds of political resources to um, promote Hillary Clinton and to elbow out Bernie Sanders, despite, by the way, a lot of polling that showed that Bernie Sanders might have been the much more competitive candidate against Donald Trump in the general election. Now, that was a potentially a, a self-inflicted wound for the Democratic Party, but here we are in the big midterm election. The Democratic Party is at its weakest point in modern history, but this could be potentially a uh, wave year for the Democrats. The question is, what kind of Democrats uh, will voters have a choice uh, to, to vote for? Uh, this election cycle, and we're seeing the DCCC, the party establishment, double down on the same kind of behavior uh, they engaged in in the 2016 uh, presidential primary. They're moving very aggressively. You know, mm -hmm. this Colorado case is interesting, but we're seeing similar um, anecdotes uh, from candidates in the Houston suburbs, on um, the St. Paul suburbs, in Omaha, in, in Orange County, in San Diego County, in Pennsylvania. You know, we've talked to a number of candidates that say, you know, we're, we were promised uh, neutrality. We're promised resources to run. Right. You know, we're trying to be part of the resistance against Donald <laughs> Trump and, and be good Democrats here. And the party is actually doing everything they can, everything they can to elbow us, elbow us out of the race and to just hoist up uh, these establishment pick candidates so, that were selected early on. So, Lee, you don't think revelations like this will move the dial at all? Well, who knows? You know, we've covered uh, this dynamic on an almost day-to-day, -day, weekly basis. We had a big feature on this in January, but I think the audio is such a vivid example that it might kind of mobilize some public opinion or at least a, 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 at least a discussion uh, around this dynamic. And potentially a shame Democratic leadership, because when you hear it back, it doesn't sound very good. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's for the Democratic Party to decide. <laughs> All right. Well, Lee Fong, thank you so much for being with thank us. Thank you for having me.